All right, everybody, welcome to this week's episode of the Beyond Nemesis podcast. Thanks for joining us again every Monday at 8 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Central. Uh, I'm one of your hosts, Mayor Reynolds. I'm, I'm Jedi. Jedi Yuki. Jedi Yuki. Did the screen change? Am I screen lagging over there? There it goes. Stream's a little bit behind. All right, we're, I think we're good. Yeah, we're good. Just a little bit behind. I have Billie Eilish on my screen. See, that's what I had too. <laughs> I'm past Billy though. All right, so let's let's dive right in. Um, J J, I'm, I'm gonna call you Punished Jedi today, like Punished Snake or something from Metal Gear Solid, because you're so. How many how many hours of sleep have you got in the past 24 hours? Two. Probably like probably like two. Yeah. <laughs> it's Punished Jedi you got a plane episode. Yeah, I, I tried laying down on the plane or uh, putting my head down on the plane. Uh, and I don't know, Southwest Airlines does not have quality like cables to put your head on. We can't and, see uh, your dog as well this week. What's up? We can't see your dog as well this week. I don't know if this episode's going to be as good because I can see her, but just not days. not as well. Yeah. She was mad at me all week. My friend, my roommates were telling me like sending me photos of her just like laying in my bed. It was just, it's so sad to see. All right. Hey, Chica, how are you? Uh, so we're going to start with, I just, I don't know. I wanted to do this one first. So I'm going to start with Midnight Society, Dr. Disrespect Studio, 402 Studio. Uh, for those of you who haven't heard, Doc started his own studio. I mean, in fairness, I mean, that's what we're all calling it. But I mean, the people running the studio are actually not Doc, I would guess. It's uh, 402 of Call of Duty fame. Some of the other uh, Halo folks, some of the Gears of War folks. Chat wants to know what your dog's name is. Her name is Yuki. Oh, kind of like Jedi Yuki. Uh, yeah, kind of different Yukis. Wait, wait, wait. I had a Yuki in my World of Warcraft guild back in the day. He was a no mage. Was it you? No, it definitely wasn't me. Okay. I didn't play well. I have taste. OK, just check. <laughs> thanks for that one. Uh, uh, that's earned after all my Pokemon disses. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> Well played, sir. Um, <laughs> all right. So Dr. Disrespect Studio announced kind of their they're calling it a founder's pass. And and I thought this the way they did this was interesting. The reaction, I would say, has been extremely mixed, to say the least. Two polar opposites. Basically, they are selling uh, what they call a founder's pass for $50. Mm -hmm. Understandably. You get uh, you get. An NFT, which is what everybody's focusing on, like you get a unique NFT, but then what comes with that NFT? Uh, early access to game builds, uh, like a voting system for everybody who has one of these. There's 10,000 of them to actually vote on game features um, and a lot of other things like things like that kind of to, to kind of be part of the game development process. And I've still said that this game is probably three years off at best. Um, but everybody flipped about the NFT thing. And I just wanted to, yeah. to get your take on this, because I know you hate crypto and NFTs. Yeah. I mean, I don't want me to speak for you, but that's my... No, no, you're not wrong. I, I think you're that's... You're not true. wrong. But um, well, how, how, what was your reaction? Because this was kind of their first big step in any direction since the announcement of the studio. So definitely still confused. It's interesting because i expected doc of all people to have a very clear message about how it works and i think it's pretty clear on how it does work um i think we're all still like trying to figure out how to integrate nfts and the stuff and it's just gonna happen it's not something we can avoid so mm -hmm. it's just looking at you know that that method of handling the the nft side of things i disliked because it felt like it wasn't a community priority it felt more of like a you know, a buyer's pass for priority mm -hmm. instead of instead of people who, you know, you, Doc, in particularly represent such a big voice of the community where mm -hmm. people agree with you in a lot of things. And it's so weird to like have a very like exclusive development team or a development community uh, that's so niche. I mean, it, the funniest thing about NFTs, and I saw something like an article about like, what are NFTs and how are they translated to gamers? It was just like most gamers are NFT owners. And it's just like, yeah, but like, are they actually competitive, hyper competitive players? Are mm -hmm. they actually going to be valuable, you know, opinions and as well as feedback on the like game development and stuff like this? So I don't know. I didn't like that part. That's the only thing I wasn't, a, I wasn't a big fan of. I was a fan of the concept art though. Like, yeah. Those NFTs are pretty dope actually. And 
whenever you get to see the customization between all of them, I thought that was pretty cool. I yeah. don't think it was a bad thing. And they said that's going to drop into the game as like banners and stuff like that. So I thought that made sense. Just I, I didn't like the, the the exclusive founders pass for development. Yeah, I I kind of I kind of like it. I, I don't want to say I like it because I'm not sure that I, I want to say it go. I, w- I was not in one bit offended by it. Let me put it that way, because I think mm-hmm. I think one way or, or another, I think this kind of thing is like is actually kind of a good thing and a step forward. Just take the NFT thing out. So like because this yeah. is what I've been telling people is like, you know, people want to dunk all over NFTs and that's fine. That's your prerogative. If you don't like them, you don't like mm-hmm. them. Um, yeah. But you don't even need to like the NFTs or even care about the NFTs. Like, I think it is a great opportunity personally to be able to to participate in game development like this to get like to be able to vote and like to hear from the developers and and have like direct input and say like no i think this is a is this is a great idea no this is a bad idea and you know some will argue that well they're making you pay for for beta access i heard that you know that but or or you know they're making you pay always done it though that's what i said like Take it back to the Xbox 360 days. You pre-order a game and you get beta access. Like, yeah, we've always done that. This is essentially the same thing. Stroud brought this up. He was telling everybody, he's like, y'all guys love Twitch drops, but whenever it comes to NFTs, like y'all lose y'all's minds. And while they're not exactly the exact same product, they're within the same exact like uh, value of it, right? And it's just like saying, oh, I subscribe to Amazon Prime. Mm -hmm. Twitch drops. You don't even know what your Twitch drops are even going to be. Yeah, I mean, I don't think anyone's ever taught me wrong. You know, I hope people have that intuitive intuition, but like, I don't think I've known anybody who's like, I subscribe to Amazon Twitch drops specifically. Yeah, but it, it's like a perk. It's same, concept, same concept. And I, and I think something that I liked too, what they did is they did not force you to use or buy any type of cryptocurrency. You could buy this for fifty dollars USD. You didn't have to, you know, go to some marketplace and swap your coins and, you know, kind of like shoehorn mm-hmm. all this. They're like, hey, if you want you want access to our game, you want to participate in the development process, it's 50 bucks. It's not that much different. It's just a, it's a different method of pre-order or even like Kickstarter, right? Like we've all we've all been doing it. Not everybody has, but I've backed Kickstarters before and you expect certain perks or, or Patreon, you know, like you pay this much a month and you're going to get exclusive videos updating you on the game development process and discord amas or or whatever um it's it's just a different take on it and then and they decided to um you know kind of flavor it with with nfts and like like it or not um i i still think it's very easy to ignore the ignore the nft part if you if you want to if you're interested in being part in the development of this game I think the fifty dollars, or any game for that matter. If you're a big fan, you know. Imagine if uh, the next, imagine if three four three said, "Hey, for the next Halo game, hope oh, this is ten years away. Um, you know, we're gonna let people pay fifty dollars. You'll be able to test the game, give our feedback, give your feedback. You know, vote on things." As an Uber fan, I would love that. I'd pay it in a second because that's the value to me, not the NFTs that they're gonna give me or whatever. You think that the problem was with whenever he came when it comes to announcing these types of things is that they don't need to be necessarily like labeled as an NFT. I mean, that's the point of it is so it could be on a blockchain network, right? Mm-hmm. So it's just what's the value I... in that for them? That's it's just like why not just do this away gamers are already familiar with. I I said earlier that that NFTs already basically need a rebrand because I because the NFT name has already got such like a bad connotation. Yeah. I think mm-hmm. if the if somebody finds a better way to market NFTs, just come up with a whole different term. We are going to give you, we are going to give you in-game skins that you can that you can buy, sell, and trade for for money. Uh, and we're gonna call so it good. we're gonna call it uh, Yuki. We're gonna <laughs> we're gonna call them Yukis. You know what I mean? I think people would be like, oh, that sounds kind of interesting. You know, like I don't think people would like flip out. But but they've got such this weird connotation attached to them already that um it, it also depends on who the market is specifically. Because if we think about like the average NFT owner, mm-hmm. probably gonna be your average day traders, if not your your your, your stock dudes who learned about what you know, Dogecoin was and all of a sudden now rides the wave of all crypto. Um so if those people could stay out of that too, 
without being extremely obnoxious like they have been with current NFTs and the board apes and the board ape uh, profile See, pictures, the bad takes like that's that's where we'll see success. Also, that's that's part of the problem, too, is that the space and everybody knows this. The, the space has been so dominated by like scams and ridiculous stories yeah. that, that it's not you authentic know, that, you know, there are 10 percent of, of NFT and blockchain gaming products out there that, that have great potential. But but they're all getting hit with this nasty wave of very real scams that are out there. And, um, mm. and I, I, I'm, I'm what I'm waiting for is the first true like triple A game. Like somebody's going to come along. And I don't know whether it be Midnight Society or somebody else. Somebody will come along and they will make a huge game that everybody's looking forward to. And it's, it's going to stand on its own as a game. And they're going to be like, also, we have NFT integration. Because I think the problem right now is a lot of these games are leading with, oh, we're a game with NFTs. I think if you reverse that and like sell us something that we know and love as a game and then you know, oh, and we have like this optional NFT stuff, and then people start to dabble with it. The people mm -hmm. be like, oh, okay, this isn't, this makes sense now. I feel like that would have the same effect though, depending on like you know how it's introduced to. So the messaging needs to be <laughs> That's extremely what matters, clear, right? Exactly. Yeah, it's got to be super clear about it, and the intentions have to be very transparent. If right. people, people are still under the impression, if we take it a step back from NFTs and just ignore that altogether, people still believe that gamers, like game development and gaming industry, has to be like this market where nobody makes absolutely any money at I all hate that you're so um, right too. It you're so free. right it has to be like this true authentic you've like you know you're people expect you know games that they grew up with to have like and it has you know it's impacted their lives so much and so frequently that's whenever you 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 start to show how much money you're actually making that's when it's it's clearly like oh well this is clearly not within my best interest i don't want yeah. to this making money yeah i i got into i'm so glad that you brought that up because i got into this argument with this guy i hate to say it but it, it was on tiktok actually he was commenting oh. on this this story this exact story because i made a tiktok about it and i was kind of saying what i was saying right now that you know this is games have a variety of ways to make money and you might not like a particular avenue but all games need to have a way to make money you might some people might prefer mm -hmm. to pay $70 mm -hmm. up front. Some people might prefer to buy loot boxes. Some people, and he was, he was just across the board. Loot boxes are bad. Battle passes are bad. NFTs are bad. And I was like, so do you want to pay 70 or $80 for it, for all your games? And if he says, yes, that's totally fine. That's like a valid opinion, you know, but, but he was like, no, like, like, like games, you know, like everybody, like, like blah, blah, blah. And I was like, how do you make a hundred million dollar product and then just, put it out with no way to make any of your like what what like your argument holds no <laughs> and he just like totally dropped off the map yeah. like like it's just all bad and i'm like and that's not to say that like loot boxes really <laughs> are like amazing and nfts are amazing and battle passes are amazing they all have their own pros and cons but you got to have some way to make money i mean I wonder, pick a pick a I way how the, I subscription how the average fees. gamer actually thinks about how the video game industry makes money because it really doesn't like, hardware especially nobody consoles makes... lose money hand over fist yeah and it's just people people like it's okay to say like oh this game sold over 10 million copies and if you just do very simple math of just what does that value equal over you know two plus two right that's all it is it's just like you can make that you know own an argument that's not how the money is transferred that's not how all of it is even done they don't understand like that that marketplace isn't a free place for you to just sell your stuff. You've got to buy the place where you put it. And it's a lot of money to keep your game listed mm -hmm. on any of these marketplaces. Yeah. It costs a lot of money to continue to do marketing and distribution. Yes. Like, I'm not going to say loot boxes are like the main are the main reason like games continue to like grow. It's definitely just you know, we've talked I've said it a million times. It's users, it's people within that game mm -hmm. actually playing it utilizing it so that way those sponsors that way those um people investing in those investments show that this is you know trending yeah. upwards you gotta have an fortnite, roi right now yeah yeah if fortnite is probably like the only exception for like the past few years because it's just not died at all mm -hmm. and whenever people look at like development cost right like that's all done beforehand it doesn't contribute to the continuation most of the time at least right. traditionally if we're looking at like Halo 1 to Halo 2 and Halo 3, it's 
we did so well. Now the rest of our ROI is affecting the rest of the product. Let's go ahead right. and move on with part two of this. That's how it used to work. If you made enough yeah. sales, you would do DLC. Like that's yeah. that's how it would work. Now it's basically expected that you will have you know live service aspects. And um, wait till people find out there's no gratuity after like a game ships. Yeah, yeah. Like, like people think devs just like just make it like. A, How do you a pay those people? Yeah, I mean, they got they yeah. got a, they got healthcare. <laughs> they have a salary. You know, like one of the things that um the one of my favorite things that people always bring up when stuff like this comes up, and like and again, I I I will not disagree that there are certain games. I and I again, I think a lot of the problem with NFT integrated games right now is that that is their big selling point. They're not showing you like a super high quality game and being like, oh, and we have NFTs. They're they're trying to they're trying to ride on the back that they have NFTs to carry their game, which I think is why it, it's in reverse. Um, but so, I, uh, I want to segue really quick so that we can look at what Witchy said specifically yeah. on like what she wants to to see NFTs grow. Mm-hmm. Can you read that? And while you read that, I'm going to informally your opinion, maybe have that conversation. I'm going to go grab a monster that's in my freezer right now. And I want to <laughs> explode. Okay. You don't need to put the beer right back on screen. I'll be right no, back. I'll, I'll read it. I'll read it. I would have preferred Fortnite skins to be NFTs. I've spent so much money on a digital game that I'll never be able to recoup by selling a used game. That's very true. Uh, someday my son will grow out of it. So the money invested will be gone forever. It's not limited. The skins, the skins seem to be endless. Oh, there's the dog, by the way. There's Yuki. Unlike expansion packs, that is a great, great, great point. You can't sell. Uh, I mean, if you buy a physical game, you can trade it in. But the value of those those used games, you know, it's classic. You take, you buy a game for sixty, seventy dollars at GameStop, and then you take it back, and they give you five bucks. Um, I'm glad. Uh, can you still hear me? Yeah, I can still hear you. Oh, okay. I didn't know if you had earbuds in or speakers or what. Yeah, she makes a great point. You know, uh, people back in the day, you could, you know, buy your game for 50, 60 bucks, take it to GameStop, and hopefully you would get like 15 bucks for it if you were doing really good, you know, your physical game. Or they might give you the famous like, oh, yeah, we'll give you a dollar and 97 cents for this for this game that came out like a month ago. And, uh, you know, NFTs are a potential answer to that. Like, oh, I'm not playing this game anymore. I can trade my skins or my armor or my weapons and 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 it, it is a it is a great point and that's at the, that's what's at the core of the whole argument about nfts it's it gives players ownership you always hear people say that mm-hmm. is we're giving players ownership um and, and i think i think too one of the things that will help nfts in game nfts is that when those nfts much like achievements become earned i think the value of them will be better than um, I, I don't even want to say better necessarily, but um, it, it will definitely. I think it will, depending on what the product is. Though. Right, depending right. Depending on what it is. I don't want to say it will be like, across the Nintendo board better. NFT, like, imagine if in, in Nintendo had NFT games, right? Mm-hmm. Like, imagine that their entire back catalog that they don't have to care, they don't care about clearly. <laughs> you know, imagine how we Sad. can like, you know, redistribute all of that, and they don't have to lift a finger. I, the, mm-hmm. My favorite thing whenever it comes to crypto and it comes to blockchain is that it's all decentralized. Yes. Um, and that that's a lot of value, obviously, because mm-hmm. now your value is literally the same as everybody else's to, to some capacity, depending on what you're wanting to trade it for. But, you know, in that specific marketplace for digital, that's where we're going. Yeah. You know, who's going to control that and having a decentralized marketplace for that, I think is the biggest win here. So whenever which is talking about wanting to like trade her, Fortnite skins for like other stuff. That's the kind of stuff I want to see because we can't do that quite literally almost anywhere. Yeah. Except for Steam, except for the Steam marketplace. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite things whenever this argument comes up, and not only about NFTs, about uh, it, it normally comes up about loot boxes and stuff. But one of the, my favorite things, and going back to that game developers need money, I always laugh when people say, nobody asked for this. Nobody, and it's usually about oh, loot boxes. And I'm, and I'm like, look, I have I I have bought very few loot boxes across games in my life because I always say I'm not opposed to them, but I always say they they generally don't give me any real value. Like the game is the game, you know, the way my character looks and especially in a first person game does not enhance my my, personally Mm -hmm. my fun, but I respect other people's choice to buy them. But when people say nobody asked for this, I'm always like, 
uh, the billions of dollars in microtransactions that are happening every year really say otherwise, because whether anybody asked for them to begin with or not, I don't know, but there's certainly evidence that people want them because they are literally spending millions of dollars a day on these things. So yeah, like I mean, it or how not. How do people think innovation just like happens? Yeah. Like, does it, like, nobody asks for the wheel. <laughs> Yeah, that's true, too. <laughs> I'm pretty sure, like, unconsciously, there's, like, a, a caveman and a cave lady just, like, I really want to get somewhere faster. I just don't know how to do it. And I'm just yeah. like, there it is. You know, and there's just that one caveman who's just stuck inside of his cave. He's like, booga booga, no ask. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the people didn't come to the king one day of England or what, you know, whatever and say, we really want a pulley system, you know, a system that would let us put ropes and to use things, you know, like somebody came up with it like one man or woman thought of it usually you know with a lot of these inventions um so yeah really interesting okay what's up hobbs um so anyway i'm really hoping i actually get into this midnight society thing because to me uh being involved in game development uh it is valuable that that's that's my at the end of the day i i will pay for it every time because it, you're always going to get the game at the end of the day too like this 50 bucks is i'm sure going to get you the game so so far doc i mean i would do it not for the sake of like what you were willing to which is a great which is a great reason to actually want to invest which, is, which i respect a lot i actually like have a lot of trust in doc for this mm -hmm. and as well as the rest of the people who are on that development team mm -hmm. to make this happen um you know it's because of doc that we have actual you know action in most games in terms of just growth and development of it and you know i don't want to say he's the end all is all but for the most part you know he's he's got a he's a valuable person in the gaming industry right now yeah, uh, love, him or hate been, him. yeah love him or hate him he's actually worked in the gaming industry mm -hmm. he's worked for uh what was it raven software i think or was it uh it was uh, for a i forget which one it was Treyarch? i think it was Treyarch. That might, it's, it has to either be Treyarch or sledgehammer i, th I would think he worked on Infinite yeah. Warfare. That was the game he did. Whoever developed Infinite Warfare. That was definitely Sledgehammer. I mean, like he he has the knowledge. He knows what it, he knows what it takes to do it. He's been through the he's been through the trenches. So I trust him on this. You know, I I remember seeing it going, oh God, NFT, whatever. But reading in it, you know, this is super bad. But I have a lot of trust in Doc to hopefully make this a right and not a wrong. Yeah. Time will I mean, tell. We, told, we said it. We said it also when he announced the studio. He's just like, "Hey, Doc, you better make a good game because you put a lot of money where your <laughs> the mouth audio is." Audio better be perfect. What is a good game? <laughs> yeah, dude, dude, I better have like five sets of the years after that game. Man, uh, there's somebody was just saying something similar to me. So there's this. Um, and we're getting really off topic now, but there's this really. He's the most prominent World of Warcraft lore YouTuber. His name's Bellular, and he's uh he knows everything about. World of Warcraft lore that there is, but he is very, 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 very critical of the writing and the lore and the story. And he basically makes a living being critical of the story. And sometimes that mm -hmm. means tearing it apart. Um, so now he has started his own game development studio and he's making a very story focused game. And that's what the other person was saying to me is like, this better be the best story ever because you've been harping for a decade on YouTube that, you know, this this story over here, this billion dollar yeah. product has this horrible, horrible story. So you better deliver. It's so interesting. Like it, it, we we talk about Lord of the Rings and how much like not that you hate it, just you don't you don't have interest in it. Yeah. And it's just I look at Lord of the Rings as like the starting point of all things yeah. lore appropriate, uh, intentionally, not unintentionally. Like you know, J.R. Tolkien, like he he had a he had a vision. Sure. Did I call him or Tolkien? Tolkien had a vision. Um, I thought you said it correctly. Like, okay. Okay. I was, I'm still. Bleh. But he had a vision, right? And he kind of laid the foundation on how to use those building blocks to create a cinema, like not just a cinematic, but just like a lore, a lore uh, Bible. And mm -hmm. now it's just, it's so easy to do that. I'm pretty sure for him, it was hard as hell. And I'm pretty oh, sure yeah. it is hard as hell, but it's much easier. It's much more accessible these days. So now it's just like, how do people actually get invested in universes now? And I'm trying to think like right now, like whenever I watch an it's anime, tough. you know, almost everything is the exact same thing now. Mm -hmm. uh, everything is, oh, I died in my real life world and got transported into another world that now has fantasy characters and stuff like that. It's actually called Isekai. It's a, it's a very <laughs> gimmicky trope and people recognize it. Like mm -hmm. Sword Art Online wasn't the first to do it, but it was the, it, it pretty much 
skyrocketed that yeah. that genre type. And you look at lore for all these different types of like you know mediums, whether it's a book, anime, game, and stuff like that. It's just you got to really learn how to be invested, and it's so hard for me to be invested these days. Yeah, like I have, and that's why I think Marvel does so good. There's already like years upon years of like every like of lore there, and yeah. how do you start new lore? I was actually going to say um, that that there is an other side to that too, though, where I, I think. And this is the problem that I have have been, have been having with Marvel post uh, Endgame or yeah post Endgame is it, at some point it may become too ha- difficult to, to stay invested in a universe because it comes so hard to catch like everything. Um, mm-hmm. So so there's that too, and I'm not, Marvel's not the only one. I mean, all comic books have been that way for decades. So every story gets rebooted and retconned, and there's no con- mm-hmm. I mean there's continuity, but there's no real continuity. So it almost gets to a point where like you jump in and like you're really enjoying it and then something happens and then you like research it a little bit and you see that there's just like so much that you're like i don't even want to continue with this because it's just gonna it's it's just so massive i mean warhammer 40k is one too i tried to get into that at one point and i was just like this is so that. big that i will never ever ever be able to like have any it's real grasp it for it you know what i mean like it's so oh, unwieldy and it, I heard it's, I hear so it's great. That's not a diss to the content. It's that it's so massive. That's what I liked about Arcane. Like, I did not know a damn thing. Yeah. League of Legends. Now I know more than I knew before. And yeah. I mean, Arcane was just amazing in general. Oh, and, yeah. Which you, the reason why you're selling your stain, you're sticking $10 is because all Apex Legends cosmetics are awful. I agree. <laughs> and they're not yeah, all like, awful, I, but they, they're yeah. not all awful. But like, in comparison they're to like, any tier. other game, no. Ooh, I was just thinking about this today. I saw, um, you know, Paladins, which is, I don't want to say lol dead game, but a much more niche game that came out, what, five, six, seven, eight years ago. Um, like, mm-hmm. like just the other day, like recently, they had like a, like a Rambo, an actual Rambo collaboration, like a Rambo skin in the game. I'm like, this is a small studio, a small game. And they're picking up licensing for these collaborations, you know, like you look at what Fortnite's doing, you look at what Warzone, Warzone puts Snoop Dogg in the game, like a new Snoop Dogg skin in the game today. And it's like, and Apex is sitting there just like, oh, well, we got some, we got some red uh, armor on this guy now with some spikes on it. And then, you know, it's different mm-hmm. than the blue version with the spikes on it. And it, it, I don't, I don't know. It seems like EA is really cheaping out on, on budget and licensing and stuff. And it's 100%. unfortunate. They had the whole monster energy drink thing going on. You know how cool it would have been if I could have just like gone out and bought like different colors of energy, monster energy, and just like gotten different skins for mm-hmm. b- getting the can. That's what Halo did. Yeah. Oh, shit. I didn't mean to slam my hand on my desk like that. I didn't um, hear but it. No, it's just, gosh. Okay, cool. It just sucks that. I mean, Apex is so. I've been playing again a lot lately. Um, I love Apex, but their really skins funny. are not top tier. Yeah, they're not good. I only, the only skins that I'm like, really happy that i bought are my bloodhound uh that owl skin mm-hmm. um where he's got the whole headpiece does mm-hmm. done and everything like that and the uh, the kitty armor for wraith so <laughs> generally the, the only two skins i'm happy with. generally their battle passes are literally like the level 100 and 110 skin is like the only like must have <laughs> item in the entire battle pass it's yeah. pretty disappointing you know um, what? They are missing out on a on an opportunity here. They can have a Ronaldo skin because they have the FIFA franchise. They can have you can play as Ronaldo. And, you know what? <laughs> that, they don't even do that. They don't even collaborate with their own EA franchises. Like they brought in like a Mass Effect gun charm when uh, like Legendary Edition launched. Mm-hmm. And it's like okay, sweet, do more of that. Like like why don't you have like actual like N seven like gun skins like or that. or uh, a Dead Space uh, skin? Oh, what or, is that? Anything, it may not be EA. you know, Anything. I don't want to throw your boys under the bus. It could just be respawn. Maybe they don't want to do those kinds of collaborations. I mean, I, I know, I know 343, for example, wants to keep things pretty canon tight, but Apex, I don't think, is a game. I, I, some people follow the story, the, the story and lore of Apex Legends are not like, like, holy. It's it, just, mm-hmm. just, 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 I mean, look at Fortnite. Just just have fun, man. Just give people fun mm-hmm. stuff that they that they what makes them have fun and spend their money and they'll do it. It's funny that you say that. I every time I go to the Apex Legends like subreddit, there's always somebody in there talking about like Apex Legends lore and the Titanfall universe. I'm just mm-hmm. like, man, dude, all of this is very like 
missing pieces right here. How are y'all like this excited for like a voice line that's like less than yeah. five seconds long? <laughs> I mean, it. <laughs> It's it's not... like, did you hear what Loba said to Bloodhound? Because like he was like yeah. <laughs> Bloodhound was in a relationship with Pathfinder. I mean, Overwatch I thought did um did lore really really well for a multiplayer only game. Like, like because but they also did utilize some uh some like comics and stuff like that. Um, Overwatch I thought did it well. I think Apex and I love Apex to death. It, everything is just so safe in Apex. They play it very safe with the story with the skins um they never really do anything bombastic um and we're gonna get into that in like, a minute i wonder if like fortnite is just taking up all of these different kinds of like marketing Licenses. opportunities that won't allow them to like <laughs> multi multi -market. well let's i mean you said it let's let's talk about it because it's, it's on the uh agenda for today so Are we uh, about EA again? no fortnite um so fortnite just the new season launched just yesterday and, uh, you know, they launched the new Battle Pass. They put Doctor Strange in the game. That was kind of one of the big ones. But they, they took building out of the game. And it's been very Temporary. controversial. It's nine days, I believe. Yeah. And I think I think it was genius because it's got everybody talking about Fortnite again. Like, and that's what I mean when, like, the, Epic is very, very good at at marketing and get, keeping people talking about their game having these big events and they're willing to go virtually anywhere they just took the main mechanic that makes their game unique out of the game like sounds mm -hmm. like suicide right but hey here we are talking about it here everybody yeah, is I mean, talking yeah. about it i see like influencers talking about reinstalling fortnite just to go play yeah. again. literally like jack dunlop courage himself is just like doing attendance man like shout out on one of his youtube channels it's like hey if you look here you see Tim, uh, tomato man tomato head man like they take out all the building and there he goes falling and dropping and mm -hmm. dying to his death basically and it's just mm -hmm. like dude even, like they're not there's no way that they're just like communicating with these influencers to just make content like that I, it's so good you're right like, they're really really good they, at it they they literally it just seems like epic when they made this game it started to blow up like somebody there whoever tim's called tim sweeney whoever you want was like we're pulling out all the stops for this game we are going to to get all these licenses like we're gonna put freaking marvel characters in our game we're gonna put rappers in our game we're gonna put john wick in our game like like things that sound absolutely insane right but they're like like we're going for it and like you look at a game like apex for whatever reason um and, you know i love apex of death it's one of, it's my most played game of the past three years for sure uh and you just see this like i, I don't mm -hmm. know like frozen by indecision uh, or i think are you um, okay second. did I you cut I'm, out i'm lagging over here yeah yeah i am <laughs> i think you're concurrent I'm, like, freezing now freezing on me i think we're good yeah uh no it, and you're right 100 and respectively like for fortnite it's just like it's like they're the only studio who's ever like done stuff that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't make sense that, you know, I can be Spider-Man, Wolverine, Master Chief and Kratos in the same squad of the lobby building like these mansions just to like, you know, try and get some kills. But like they did what I think every game developer has always wanted to do, which is get like these top tier characters in their games all at once. Mm -hmm. And like I commend them for it. Like they've done, they are the ones that done what made sense the most. I were, if I was a kid, I'd be hyped all of the stuff that they had. Oh, Especially yeah. like during our time. If they had, if I had like all these like Spider-Man skins in Halo, like Halo Two or Halo Three, like yeah, cool that's insane, right? I mean, we were all. I mean, remember how like insane it was to have Hayabusa armor in in Halo Three? That yeah. that was like, oh my god. Um, but I mean, I and I I don't like I have played probably ten hours of Fortnite in the past two years, maybe. Mm -hmm. I have definitely spent more money in Fortnite than I have in Apex Legends, because like when they roll out a Halo skin, I have to have that. When they roll out mm -hmm. the Gears of War skin, which they did, I have to have it. And like now there's a Doom Slayer skin that's rumored, and like you will bet I have to have that. Way to be a consumer, Mayor. Yeah. Well. Pfft. Hey, <laughs> when you're a hardcore fan of something, you're just a hardcore fan. And that's what they're yeah, capitalizing yeah. on. You, like, just like you that said, like, like, they're just like, hey, we're putting Kratos in. We're putting in, you know, it makes no sense whatsoever, but it's freaking sweet. You know, like, <laughs> who's going to say it's not? 
Uh, you're right. I mean, like you, you, it's funny that you said that. And you're like, hey, this is like I've only put ten hours of the game in, but I've spent the most money on this game at the same time. For sure, for sure. I didn't get the Master Chief skin, unfortunately. So, um, I did. Yeah, I, did I did play. I thought it was cool. It I did play really that cool blood topic. that uh that Blood Gulch event that they did. That was it was in. I didn't know. It wasn't bad. It was kind of fun. It was just st- stupid, different. Had to do it. Okay. Man, I wish I did now. I did want to do like the Ariana Grande concert. I love watching what they've done with like Kendrick Lamar. Like I thought that, or no, not Kendrick Lamar, uh, Travis Scott. Mm-hmm. Like, I thought it was like musical concert events are like super cool. Nobody died at that like, one though. No one did. <laughs> Don't Sorry. Um, Sorry. Um, but like just seeing that kind of stuff, like just gets me excited that people are literally like just waiting in lobbies just to see like their favorite like artist. Like mm-hmm. I love music, so I kind of do the same thing. I will wait outside for a couple of hours just to go see my favorite sure. bands play. So it's just like seeing that digitally was like I a think, really cool. Really I think piece. it's it's both strange, I think, and amazing because like we all have these like um, I think I think the, those events have created like shared cultural experiences for today's like kids and young people that they will look back on. Um, and, and, you know, in 20, 30 years, it's, it's weird to think about that, but there's no doubt that people will talk about like, you know, all those kids who were, you know, seven years old or eight years old, however many millions mm-hmm. attended that like dead mouse concert or whatever, like whatever the first one was, that might've been dead mouse. I think, I think it was dead mouse, yeah. uh, whichever concert, you know, just like, the, and especially during a pandemic, you know, like people are going to look back and be like, do you remember that? Like, that was amazing. You know, like it's weird to think that way. Like that that's what like this generation of kids are coming up with but they are like they're literally going to have these shared cultural experiences like in Fortnite through a video game and like 20 mm-hmm. years ago that thought would have been unheard of and it, yeah. it is pretty amazing that games are literally leading the way in popular culture in in many ways it's pretty amazing i'm really glad to uh i don't want to gatekeep i th- i used to pro- I probably would have been gatekeeping like I was like a teenager or something like that because I always what I had I always wore my heart on my sleeve. Yeah. Whenever, like whenever it comes to just the things I like, obviously, and we see that today. I would never gatekeep this thing now. I would always like encourage people to just try it out. And always give your opinion on it. You know, th- th- especially when it comes to, like the Halo thing. You know, I wouldn't tell anybody who's never played Halo not to watch this. Mm-hmm. I think you know being counterproductive i think that's very counterproductive to mm-hmm. just say like oh that's not what i like so if i don't like it you may not like it yeah we'll see um with that one for halo but you know I, that's I next love. on the agenda right <laughs> also the segueing what a great way to do it i do know actually um so I, i'm pretty sure it's just gonna be you and i ragging on this show for the next 20 minutes now but the halo show debuts <laughs> the 24th right is that friday that's thursday um so anyway uh i know you know that this happened the showrunner came out and flat out said we didn't look at the games and here the part that bothered me probably the most about that quote so that's like a pretty bad way to start talking about your show that is based on a video game that's a pretty bad opening Mm -hmm. statement to make but the next like two sentences later he said something that was even worse and more (laughs) egregious in my opinion he said yeah so we didn't feel limited so we, we we didn't look at the games so we didn't feel limited by the fact that it was a video game and when i heard this i just thought of like this like like 60 i don't know how old this guy is but just like super boomer type dude who's old like boomer yeah. yeah like like video game story you know no we're not we're not gonna look at that we're not gonna be limited by that you know and it's like well dude the story isn't mario save princess peach from the castle you know, like it is much more intricate and, and involved in that. And it, I just I, I really want to know how a guy like this, like, gets that job. Like, I'm not saying you have to hire, like, you know, somebody who has no experience in filmmaking or anything, who's just an expert on the games. But like you hired a showrunner who who virtually has no not even minimal or no knowledge of the games but like basically calls the medium like inferior like this on what yeah that saying helios you're, you're the, like where's this where does this make sense begin with is how, 
Yeah, you have the show because clearly you have a product and an IP that's going to be far better than what you've been able to ever come up with on your own. Yeah. Be, yeah, like it's total nonsense. Whenever I read that, I was like, wow, okay. Uh, I tweeted it and I deleted it because I said a bad word on there and I don't want to. <laughs> but I was like, oh man, dude, I've never felt like so bitch slapped in the face and told <laughs> you, you're, you're dumb. And, and and I guess I feel I don't, dumb wanting to watch the show. I I guess I don't understand because this this happens not exclusively to games either. You see this a lot in um, conversions from comics to movies or or books to movies. There's definitely a yeah. fine a fine line of doing your own thing and and honoring the source material, right? Like like I'm totally fine with them being like, hey, this is a separate universe. And we're gonna take creative mm-hmm. liberties, and we're gonna tell a new story. That's not offensive to me. I'll I'll be there. Um, what what is offensive is when you like start insulting the source material and like like no, we didn't even reference that. Well, if you want to improve upon the story, don't you think you should at first at least understand the story? You know, like like I I just don't I don't understand why you would base something on something that people love, and then be like. We're not gonna do what makes it what makes everybody love that. We're gonna we're gonna just I don't know do this other thing. And, and time and time again, I mean, you look at like the failure of the Cowboy Bebop live action adaption. They made changes Almost to that. Every anime live action adaptation is when, been a failure. When, when you when you change the fabric of what makes it what it is, like why are you shocked that? You're making a show specifically to capture that fandom. And then you're specifically alienating that fandom. Mm-hmm. And then it's like, what did you expect to happen? And you don't have to you don't have to cater to those hardcore fans, but they're they are the people who are going to carry it for you, who are gonna tell their friends, hey, you gotta watch this. They really have to put like a lot of cards up their sleeves on this show to really think that it's going to drive people from the show to play the games and consume more Halo media. Mm-hmm. Because it, it sucks that they, that they think, especially with the state of like Halo Infinite, that they think that even original OG fans are going to continue to consume more Halo product because it's not a good place. And You know, maybe, hopefully, you know, I want this to be, I want this to work out just for the new fans. And it sounds like based on some of the reviews I've been watching, you know, it's going to work out. But like, do we actually know that will translate over into more, more Halo content? Yeah. So I I wonder if he says this out of like understanding, like maybe he is just trolling, honestly. I think it's possible. I think he was pretty genuine. I don't think he's trolling, but. I think I don't think he's trolling. I I think he was trying to say something and he didn't get the media training that day or something like like I I think what he was trying to say is we didn't base our story. We we didn't take the story from the video game like line for line, like like chapter for chapter, Mm -hmm. you know, level for level. Um, You know, what we did is we looked at the source material. We looked at the universe. We looked at the characters. We looked at we treated the games or the novels or whatever as an as an outline. And then we, we you know, we're, we're injecting our own, uh, you know, originals and, you know, creative creative juices into it. That's not really offensive. But the way he said it was just like, we didn't look at that. And we weren't limited by the fact just that it's that. a video game. Like, no context. <laughs> yeah. No context. Yeah. Um, so speaking of Halo Infinite, let's um, this uh, this Halo Infinite Battle Royale like mode leaked last week from very reliable sources um it's supposedly a successor to halo 5's warzone mode which i don't did you like warzone yeah i like warzone yeah warzone was actually a you lot of fun it? especially mythic warzone that stuff was hype so what what are you envisioning this to be because all we know is that it's supposedly some type of successor to, to warzone from halo 5 it has battle royale like elements and the rumor is uh and i'm pretty sure it is the case it's being developed by certain affinity who has helped on halo before yeah i like certain affinity as a studio too they've always put out pretty good content they were in charge of uh putting out content for halo 2 anniversary as well so Mm. they did some really cool stuff over there um and as well as uh halo reach when uh it got acquired okay halo's acquired by mike um as far as what they're making you know I just want it to be a battle royale. See, I don't know what I don't know what it is they're making, but I want it to be a battle royale. That this is what I'm scared. This is what I'm scared of. 
because I I thought Warzone was okay, but it did not have any staying power with me. I'm like, oh, this was neat. I played it for an hour and never played it again. When was that when you played it? Like at the beginning of launch? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay. Um, I mean, so, definitely, and I don't want to—I don't want to take all away from your train of thought, but yeah. Warzone got significantly better. Um, it. If anything, it created another community of players. Mm -hmm. um, you know, like Halo always does. Every time it has a new game, it creates really hardcore, dedicated fans for it. Um, such as uh, that one arena uh, mode. I forgot what it was called. It was in Halo. It was Halo Five also. Breakout. It was a basically eliminate breakout. Yeah, I created, love breakout. Uh, created you. <laughs> so. Yeah. Warzone got much better. Direct packs weren't even a problem. Like I remember, like people were like, oh, microtransactions, but like they genuinely weren't even a problem. There were Don't way more it. cons that made the rec system be more pro proactive than the, the mm -hmm. rest of the cons. So it wasn't a problem. But Mythic Warzone was you took out and stripped out all that stuff that most people didn't like about Warzone. I don't want to play PVE. I just want to play um, PE, <laughs> PVE PVP. Yeah, like uh, Mythic Warzone, though, removed the PvP aspect and put you on a team of, I believe, five or six. I can't remember mm. the exact number. And you just firefight it out. And every round, it plays out just like firefight. See, but it's very limited. That's, that, this, is, this, is, this is my, my, my thought. I'm so conflicted by this. Because Halo Infinite absolutely needs like a big mode like, like a Battle Royale. It needs a bigger mode than big team battle, for and, sure. And I, I think... I'm worried that what we're going to get, I, this is what I think should happen. I'm just going to say it flat out. I think we should get firefight and I think we should get battle Royale. I do not want a blend of the two. And, and I, Yo, understand, I, I understand that that may take two to three years to do two whole new modes like that. And I think firefight would actually not be, not be that hard. Cause they could just put you in like different arenas that are already on Zeta halo. Um, but I, I feel like we're going to get this like blend and, and I th it's going to be like the mode that is like OK for everybody, but not great for anybody. Uh, that's well, that's my have, fear. We don't have like actual confirmation on anything. So right, that's what I mean. Doubt, maybe they are just creating a similar battle royale experience that like Apex and Fortnite have, because there is a little bit of like yeah, some PVE action there in there. So maybe they'll do something similar. What if like you're just dropping in on uh, Halo Infinite Battle Royale, which there has been leaked like audio voices and yes. stuff like that of uh, dropping out of a drop pod. So it sounds like, you know, we will actually be able to drop as like the fandom. Oh, yes. Yeah. So it looks like that's, that's probably going to happen. And maybe it's just going to be like brute chieftains, maybe elites. Uh, maybe you can elites, just kill like, them and get loot or whatever. And just drop cool stuff. Yeah. I'm imagining, I hope it's something like that. It's very safe because it sounds exactly what we already have in the market, but it's Halo. It's a very different beast. Mm -hmm. You can do so much more with that. I I, I just hope. I, I really hope. I I remember playing Warzone early on and just feeling like the PVE aspects were just not interesting to me. I I, I would just like I really have no interest in fighting this elite. I want to fight other players. So um, we'll see what happens. But I, I'm I'm thinking that this mode will get announced like this summer, like during like. I think it'll be announced for like Microsoft's E3, which yeah, does exactly. be happening. Not, e, not Microsoft's E3, but E3 in general. Yeah, they'll still do their own show. It's basically everybody pretty much will, except uh, EA confirmed they're not having one because they have no games. That's not what they said, but um, okay. Moving on, uh, a new Witcher game got announced officially today. Just today, today, and, yeah. Uh, they confirmed it's the start of a new saga, and it's going to use Unreal Engine 5. So what are your thoughts? Are you a Witcher fan? Uh, You know, I'm not going to lie. I actually never played the games. I played The Witcher 3. I think we talked about it. I played a little bit of The Witcher 3, and I was just so overwhelmed that I just yeah. said, screw this. I will just ingest any additional content that I can until I feel like I have the time to play this game. Um, but I do love the show. I know that the shows are significantly different in a lot of different ways, uh, but they're pretty close still. Thank you, Henry Cavill. Um, but I thought that was pretty cool that they're switching to Unreal Engine because the red engine that they use is very unique, and I trash. think it has done a lot of really good... Oh, you, okay, you're saying it's trash. Um, Just my I mean, I, I liked it, to be honest. Uh, well, especially with... Probably, what, uh, with what, did the, for, uh, what did they use for Cyberpunk? They use the red engine, yeah. Because that was 
you know, a technical disaster. So I wonder if that kind of played into it for a lot of different reasons. I mean, on yeah, PC, yeah. it was fine. Yeah. PC is fine. Like, especially now, everything's great. I think if you were to look at like Cyberpunk now, you're going to go like, wow, oh, this it's is much a better. Game. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I wonder if the switch was literally because of that, though, because it left that c- cyberpunk left such like a bad taste that mm-hmm. they're like, we need to just tell people we're going in a new direction and this uh, remove that from the conversation. So John Linneman from Digital Foundry came out and he said that it's probably a, be- a good thing, despite how much he liked it, too, uh, with the Red Engine. He said it was probably a good thing that they move away from it because now it's a more accessible engine that people will be able to like work and develop on. Yeah. Because you know we don't know the full story behind 2077's disastrous launch, mm-hmm. but clearly something wasn't working, and it could have been the red engine. Maybe it was a very a much more passionate project than people thought. It took like almost ten years. To oh yeah. Game. Yeah, long time. So it's just like you know clearly something's wrong, and maybe that was a hard conversation. They're going to be spending a little bit more money on it, but it might be worth it. Which is a powerful series franchise. And they could take it as far as they wanted to, honestly, yeah. even without the permission of the guy who made the books. Because if it's a continuation of it, we might have a, a whole series. Um, I don't think that's what I think it'll be. I, I, I do. It's interesting because Geralt, thanks to the show, is now more popular than ever. Uh, mm-hmm. Thanks to that. And I feel like that show is, you know, we're talking about Halo trying to create new Halo players. The Halo through the Halo show. I think if you drop the new Witcher game. Uh, you know, around the same time a new season of The Witcher show came out, I think there'd be a lot of people who might play the games for the first time. But that said, mm-hmm. if the game is so much different than what they recognize in the show, that might confuse people a little bit. So, because basically they've, they've kind of said that, you know, the story of Geralt is over. So, you know, do mm-hmm. you think that they bring Geralt back as a side character or do they just like totally just move on and do, like you said, series kind of in a new universe and this is... She can literally like go to other dimensions. I don't dimensions think it would be I don't think I think it would be really bad if they did another universe, yeah. despite the fact that the show is doing it. I I really hope that the show isn't lining up itself to be a part of the launch. I don't think Netflix is that think so. smart to do it. I think this game um, is probably really far away too. Yeah. Um, but in this case, it's just like whatever whatever happens with it, I really hope that it is a continuation and not an alternate universe because we're already doing that with so much stuff right now. DCU and MCU in particular are really bad about it. I've complained about it enough already um, that like video games and as a continuation, you know, when we get a, a reboot or remake of anything and if it's like a spinoff of something, things typically don't work out like well at all. Like mm-hmm. if Bioshock had a spinoff, in this case, honestly, Bioshock could technically do whatever spinoff it wants because they could just say, "Oh, consciousness and variables this is an alternate universe." Yeah, yeah <laughs> but, that's um, true. Yeah, but in this case, it's like, a fractal. Yeah, I, I hope whatever the witch does, it, it it comes out good, and I hope to God that it comes with a brand new camera system because I hate the camera <laughs> system in The Witcher. I hope that my biggest ask, bird's eye. My biggest ask would be. uh the, the combat system needs to be totally rehauled. But the combat and the controls for Witcher 3 were were bad. And, and mm-hmm. I just, I would really, I think pretty much everybody agrees the combat, even the most Witcher stands will tell you, the com- yeah, combat's not the greatest in, in this genre, so. Um, pretty cool that we got the announcement today. That, that was pretty fun. Always a good Monday. Yeah. I imagine as we get closer, we'll start hearing a lot more about different games. Uh, I imagine actually either the first week of April, which is technically this week, but I mean like the first week, week we'll actually get more information on like uh, E3 and stuff. Yeah. Cause it's, it's in June. Yeah. It's going to be here before we know it. I mean, I'm going to PAX uh, next month, PAX East. I'm looking forward to that. Um, All right. So this, this news is for Maz and only Maz. Sony bought Haven Studios today, <laughs> which is a new development studio headed up by uh, Jade Raymond. Uh, I, I have a roast rant ready, but I, I, maybe I should give you the floor first. I don't know. <laughs> what, how do you no, feel no, about you this? No, no, you take it away. All this right. was news today, actually, right? This is brand new news Just today, too, yeah. So I, have, I don't have much to say. You can continue the roast. All right, so... We, everybody's been asking, you know, what's Sony going to do to cut co- the combat, you know, Microsoft buying all these studios. They did buy Bungie, which was definitely a, a good get and a good fit, as we both agreed on the show. 
Uh, so today they bought Haven, which is a new developer hated, headed by Jade Raymond. Um, they were already making a PlayStation exclusive game. I'm guessing this studio, to be honest, is 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 relatively small because it's a new studio and it's in Canada on top of it. Um, so the rumor is that they're working on a live service game and, and Sony has historically been pretty bad at live service games and not even really attempted it. Too. Yeah. Um, so, I, I mean, I don't think this is a bad deal for Sony. I think it gives them another developer. It, it's fine. I'm not going to say by any means that this is, you know, oh, my we God. Have no, we have no reason to, like, say whether the studio is good or bad. Either. Right. They don't really have a portfolio to say anything. Right. Like, it's really I, good to see, like, a new studio, honestly, because that way there's a fresh slate and we can always have fun speculating on what's going to be next. So whenever well, Microsoft created the initiative, people were just like, what are they going to do? What are they going to do? Right. Um, Jade Raymond, though, this is what I will say. I think that that Jade Raymond is a bit of a false prophet. So when Jade Raymond came to came to fame, she was producing Assassin's Creed. We all know Assassin's Creed mm -hmm. turned into a big franchise. But since then, um, she's been attached to a lot of projects as producer. But a lot of this stuff really hasn't worked out. I think like her last like two or three projects literally haven't released. Um, I think she was at EA Motive, and she had a game there that got canceled. She moved she on. She's had like two game cancels. She moved on to Google. She was one of two of the prominent uh, Google game studios, uh, like big, like high ups, like you and this other guy are going to build out Google Game Studios. We all know what happened with that. They closed all of their studios. They never released a single product, um, and now she has this Haven thing. So I mean. I'm not saying their game's not going to be good. It probably will be. The fact that Sony uh, bought them probably shows that the signs are looking pretty good. Um, at, but at the same time, you also don't want to put out a live service game uh, published by, you know, a third party that you have no control over that might end up, like, closing down in, in two, three years. You want to make sure that if you're going to invest in this live service game that, you know, it's got backing and, you know, you can... Mm -hmm count on yes we're going to be able to work with these guys for the next decade because that's how long you need to be able to work on these games now is 10 years basically so i don't think it's a bad deal by any means but i i just when i see jade raymond attached to a pro to a studio i am not like oh boy it's gonna be good you know like it may it might be i hope it is i have no reason not to doubt. It's a yeah. brand new company, literally going to be built by Sony. I mean, I don't, I don't see where the where the L is on that. I'm pretty yeah. sure, like, if you were a brand new company other than Google and you're Google, so your dad, you know, I'd imagine that wouldn't be a bad deal either. But look how that turned out. Yeah, that's what I mean. Like, I mean, PlayStation's got more credibility at this point. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the fact that Sony felt comfortable buying that makes me feel like things are at least pointed in the right direction. So, uh, okay. Mm -hmm. This one, she sure is pretty. Who? Jade Raymond, she's pretty. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, I was about to start talking about the next thing. I didn't know if that's what you were gonna, uh, you were commenting on. No, no. So, did you hear about this story though? The mm -hmm. Wow Grandma. Oh my God, this is this is for real. This is the feel good gaming story of like the month or maybe the year. So there's this. She started streaming when she was seventy eight. And she's been playing WoW for 14 years. So she had an 80th birthday stream. And uh, like the Twitch community, by and large, came through to support this woman like crazy. Like Courage and like Trainwrecks and all these people were dropping like hundreds of gifted subs. Like uh, I believe her stream has been going for like almost a week now. Did she get like a 10k donut? Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, she's got like huge... Uh, amounts of uh money and uh, what's what's funny too is this is the first positive uh world of warcraft headline in probably like three years <laughs> and it's an 80 year old woman so both i both i both the twitch community uh gaming and uh the wow community kind of kind of needed this one i i just think it's 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 unique it's fun um can't can't go wrong with this one. This is just a feel good story. I don't even know if you have anything to say about it at all, but I just had to share that. No, no, I thought that was really fun, uh, more wholesome. I don't think we've had a smaller show yet. Yeah. So, um, good call out. I remember watching the video. I think I was like trying to go to sleep or something like that, or maybe I was gone. 
you know, on my tra- on my layover. I think I saw the video there, so that was pretty cool. Good for her. Yeah, that's what I mean. Just another one of those cool moments too of like the power. You know, like Phil Spencer says it, and it sounds corny, but it's like gaming is like the great unifier. You know, and it's becoming yeah, more and more I, true. I might wonder who likes whenever Phil Spencer like talks. Oh, like I don't think it sounds corny at all. I think the guy, I think the dude's pretty genuine to be out. Oh, he to is. Be honest. And, I just mean, like, if like most, most people say it, it sounds corny. saying stuff like that, I would be like, nah. But yeah. when Phil Spencer says it, I'm like, okay. Well, we've really seen it over the past few years. Like, and not mm-hmm. not, not just with Xbox. Like, stories like this, um, you know, I think, wasn't it, wasn't it like one of the first Fortnite championships won by like a 12 year old? He won like a million dollars. Yeah. Um, yeah we've got one. like the adaptability controllers now for, you know, handicapped people to be able to play games they otherwise could not. Like, we're really seeing all of these, like, I hate to say game changing because I don't mean to use pun intended, but like people literally being brought together by video games and of all types of ages, uh, you know, everything across the board is it really is cool. You know, I'm really interested to see how us as 80 year olds are going to be playing video <laughs> games. Yeah, because like right, I was thinking about it, I was like, man, dude, this lady's like on the wave right now. Like she's starting the wave mm-hmm. and she's. And when we're all 80, like all of this isn't going to matter. We're going to see like old people get we're going to see like 80 year old tens from Sentinels still playing and getting <laughs> like some crazy amount of money. And it's like, oh, it's got money again. Stupid old guy. Yeah, it will be interesting. You know, will we'll, 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 we'll 80 year old Dr. Disrespect like the mullet is now, you know, like pure white. And it's like the stash is all white and he's still out there, you know, like who knows? Um, Hold on one sec. Oh my god! Take your time. Uh, no, I'm, we're trying to book. I'm trying to get these tickets booked for uh the Jujutsu Kaisen show movie. Show and um, movie. That's like the new thing, <laughs> anime movies. It's really becoming like the next fad. It's becoming more prominent in, in cinema because it only ever did That's really I mean. big in Japan. Japan, it was always big. It was Japan, you know, that's where it always comes from. But in the U.S., it's gotten a lot bigger. So, um, I mean, we've always had some form of anime in theaters, at least the big ones. We've had Yu-Gi-Oh! movies. We had Pokemon movies. We had Digimon movie. Now it's like um, everything, though. Yeah, but as far as, like, if you're if Inuyasha had, has movies, I know those never hit theaters for isn't, sure. Isn't the Attack on Titan finale now rumored to be a movie? Yeah, that is the uh, rumor, which I hope they don't do. I hate it. I hate it. So that's what I didn't like about Avatar The Last Airbender is they wrap the rest of it up in a final long winded episode. I mean, that movie needs to be at least an hour and a 45 to maybe two hours long for us mm-hmm. to get like, the, the conclusion that we need to because Avatar was not hitting it for me. And I love Avatar The Last Airbender, but like that just did not do it for me. There was so much more storytelling we had there. And they were just like, oh, we got to speed it up. Nickelodeon said, we got to get this out of here. <laughs> I think if you do it right too, like, and I, I they probably don't want to do this because they want to build anticipation. In my perfect world, though, if you're gonna do one of these cinemat cinematic, um, or that the word I want cinema releases, like, please have it be ready to release like when the last episode, like for for example, if Attack on Titan, if the finale is gonna be a movie, the movie should be hitting theaters like a week after, like you know the normal show. You know, so, kind of leaves up. Because if they wait like two that. years, it's just like ah. We're you, anime anime watchers are used to that at at this point. Oh, I like, know. We but I've waited like years just for like the next season of one thing. Like literally in 2013, the devil is a part timer is just this little reverse isekai. You know, you die as a human, you get reversed into a fantasy life. Well, the d de- the devil. He doesn't die, but he gets transported into the human world and he loses his power. So he has to like live life like a normal person, and, but he's still the devil with some uh, some availability, some ways to get his power back. So he goes from being the devil to being a good guy. We had season one, and I think that was about 14 episodes. I could be wrong. Um, but then like literally just gone forever. And now we're getting season two later this year. That released in like 2013, 2012. Yeah. <laughs> I don't That's get so we're used to that kind of thing. It really bothers me that, you know, Berserk is cited as one of the most influential uh, mangas. I better try to pronounce that right. Of all time. We're looking at like video games and we're talking about, you know, how like 
Berserk is like a huge inf influence on like Dark Souls and Elden Ring and a bunch of other gaming franchises. I'm like, and we only have two seasons of the anime and they're that are largely like hated, like like disasters, like people hated the animation quality, especially the second uh, go around. So it's like, yeah, how is CGI in that one? How can nobody want that. How do we not have uh, like a especially now that the the, the manga I'm going to say it like that every time for the rest of my life has Fine. has ended. Um, how do we not have like somebody maybe those those conversations have to be happening. Like we need to start now, like a start to finish, like anime adaption of Berserk. It kills me I that mean, there we is. Already a... know. We already know how Japanese development works in any kind of like media. So it's just like it's probably more than likely. First of all, what's probably going to happen is that it's going to get a get a like a live theater. No. <laughs> It'll probably get like that before it ever gets. They'll do like the like, eclipse or something in Berserk. Yeah. Yeah. Like so, same thing happened with Naruto. <laughs> Naruto went to like a live theater thing before it ever went to like a movie. That's or just not really... a movie, but like an anime, you know? It kills no, no, me. No, 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 no. I'm so bad. I'm so bad. Rework that. Rework that whole thing. It did end up getting that, but we didn't get any like live action. Thank God. We don't need that. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm, it just, it drives me. I don't know. It seems like every freaking manga is being turned into like an anime and being eaten up but berserk one who's being cited as like one of the most influential of all time like we got it, it it's probably just because of like accessibility berserk is it's pretty wild like honestly it really is and i'm not saying there's no such thing as a wild anime i think attack on titan is pretty wild but in comparison attack on titan is like cartoon network quality compared to his berserk yeah yeah that goes to some pretty yeah. dark places but very dark places and like we've gone to a lot of dark places and i use attack on Titan very lightly there but like there's stuff like psychological horror stuff oh yeah that deals with genocide and... right now, yeah yeah uh and like elfin lead for example like elfin lead was like a big one too i maybe just my my guess is that like honestly berserk just doesn't have a palette the mass that can appeal. be translated into an anime properly. The anime yeah. actually, the first one was pretty decent, honestly. If you, if you watch it, that was all right. But like, if it were to last today, like anime right now is just so trendy right now. I think yeah. that's all they're trying to do. Yeah. Um, I recently learned the way that most anime get approved is through like this this light novel process um, with um, with like online posts. So. The, the, the manga, uh, you know, uh, publishers go to this website, they look at people's ideas, they scroll through them, they go, all right, cool, that works, let's turn it into a manga adaptation, see how sales go for that, turning it into an anime. That's literally the process for it. Because previously, it was make your manga, have it distributed to as many publishers as you can to see who buys it from you, and then you continue to work from there, and now it's just, like, all online, and it's just super think, super basic, super gimmicky. I think Warner Brothers... Is sick. Oh my god, it's so hot. I think Warner Brothers is choosing their movies that way too, but they're just letting like I don't know, like dogs or gorillas make the choices. So they're like voting on them Jack online. Snyder. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, Jack. <laughs> <laughs> I hope that meme never dies. Jack <laughs> Snyder. Oh, that's a good one. What the hell, Jack Snyder? Oh, he, he's out, man. Jack Snyder is not coming back. Um, that's pretty good. <laughs> uh. Since we're talking about Elden Ring, I put this on the agenda. I really have nothing further to say about it, um, except that we're it's all playing game. it. But we are talking well, about generation. We are talking about. I, I guess I'll. I will make a make a. I'll po pose a question here. So Elden Ring has passed 12 million copies sold already, which is uh, quite crazy. I think Dark Souls Three took. I think it said like a year to sell like four million copies. Yeah. Um. So it's sold like crazy. It's definitely probably, I mean, I would guess right now it's going to win game of the year, but, um, and game of a generation. I totally agree. But they also announced that they're going to expand Elden Ring into other mediums. And I'm curious as what you think, uh, what would you like to see? Cause we're talking, sitting here talking about, yeah, that's what I <laughs> it needs to be an anime. Like it's, if, if it's not an anime, I feel like they'd be doing a lot of distrust to it. And if it's an anime, they need to have like the same studios behind, like, Attack on Titan, um, Kamis Kobayashi's Dragon Me, like people who've got like really good quality, like animation, like Mappa in particular has done Jujutsu Kaisen. They've done Attack on Titan, um, namely those two specifically. And I think that 
I could be wrong, but I think they also do. Um... God, I'm so tired. I can't remember it anymore. They do another one that's really big. Rocko's oh, Modern they're doing Life. Chainsaw Man. They're doing Chainsaw oh, Man. Oh, thank Chainsaw God. Man. I've read, I've only read one volume of Chainsaw Man, but I, I can't wait for that. They are doing Chainsaw Man. So they've got a lot of like good quality there. Um, and despite what haters want to say about the CGI in there, I think it blends perfectly. I, I'm okay with it. I don't hate it as compared to like Berserk CGI. <laughs> um, so in this case, if there's a studio that could do it, I would hope it was it would be them. Yeah. So we'll see. Well, I'm also okay whenever they kind of go a different route. So I mentioned this Kobayashi Dragon Maid. Um, they've done like a lot of my favorites. They've done Violet Evergarden as well. Um, very beautiful anime. And I think Elden Ring's got such a beautiful environment that, you know, the best environment artists come from that same studio. Hopefully them. We'll see what happens. I'm really curious to see what they do because a, 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 I didn't know this until like literally this week, there was a series of Bloodborne comics and graphic novels that I had no idea about. And I actually ordered volume one really? on Amazon. Yeah, because I want to check it out. I think it came out around like the time the games came out, I'm assuming. Yeah, it came out like, no, it came out like two years after the games came out. But I didn't know. It came out a little bit after. I don't know if it's two years exactly. I never played Bloodborne, but I know it came out a little bit after. It's it's good for sure. Um, But I'm curious uh, what they do with the story, because the Souls games and Elden Ring 2 are... um, the way they tell their story is is very different than than most games and and i think a lot of players myself included have a really hard time following any type of story i mean it's easy to say the universe is really intriguing the environment the characters they all have a certain allure to them but it, it, the story itself is very very um hard to follow uh hidden away and, and i it's all and that's why through I, items basically that's, that's yeah but that's why i think that um this expanded type stuff, whether it be graphic novels, anime, whatever, could be really interesting because that may help a lot of us actually start to understand, you know, what story is being told here. Because it will obviously mm-hmm. have a chronological order with, uh, you know. Yeah. So I'm no, interested. I, I agree. Yeah, I'm interested too. I think they could definitely do a lot more of the side characters and storytelling. A prequel would clearly be the best route to go if they were to like That's a good you know, thought. create any kind of any kind of like storytelling for it. That's if like they go with the Western approach to it. Usually we don't get that kind of approach ever with like it, with any kind of Japanese adaptation for anything. So if not a prequel, we'll more than likely see something that's happening within the same universe or it's telling a unique character storyline. And it's usually going to be somebody you're like, who the hell's that? So yeah. Hopefully, hopefully I, something good comes out of that because that'd be more than that. I still need to, I still need to play the game still, man. Yeah. I haven't been had any time. I haven't had any time for it. I have a very relevant story to share. So it's been documented now that um, you know we're talking about Berserk and Elden Ring being inspired by Berserk. So basically, Guts Sword and his armor are both in the game. They're not by that name, but they're it's literally like Guts it, yeah. stuff. So I I destroyed my my character's build, destroyed it. Like I put like like twenty five levels into strength, even though I wasn't a strength character specifically. So I could so I could wield guts sword. So I go and I do that. Mm-hmm. Right, I'm level fifty two. My, my my build no longer makes any sense, but I can use guts sword. So I'm like thrilled. Can't love it. So then I go to start the quest because there's a quest a really obscure side quest chain which is really long as well to get uh, the Berserker armor. So I get like halfway through this quest line and I find out that I, I'm saying accidentally, but I don't know that term doesn't make sense. I accidentally killed the, an, an NPC earlier in the game who is a requirement to complete this quest. So I get sent to meet this person who I accidentally killed and now I'm just totally screwed. And like, A, on one hand, I'm like, I kind of love that like from gives us a game that you can that something like that can even happen. But on the other mm-hmm. hand, I'm like, this has been everything to me in my Elden Ring experience for like the past 30 hours is trying to get this Berserker armor. And now that I can't get it, I'm just like, I don't even want to play like I'm uh, it's over for me. Like, I'm, I'm so I, I'm trying to I got to post on forums online and just like just got to be some workaround or something. Yeah, <laughs> like, please. 
Uh, that's what I felt like with the with like the Fallout games. Like Fallout's got given those given us those like things too. I remember <laughs> even in Skyrim for most basic stuff. Um, Mix girlfriend was playing it for the first time, and you go to Riverwood, and you got to go meet Camilla in that shop to get the claw, so you could take it up into uh, the Draugr tomb, and like ex girlfriend ended up like stealing like everything in there but the claw. And now she's like trying to run away and like not do anything. The claw is gone when she goes back in to try and grab it. I, I like grab the controller. I'm like, where the hell did the claw go? And I looked on the ground, make sure to get knocked off or something. And she's getting constantly beat the hell out of. And she ends up killing Camilla. Yeah, no, she can't kill Camilla because she's like a important quest giver. But like, she kills like the town, the 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 seller, the brother. And she's like, I don't know what to do now. And I'm just yeah. like. You gotta restart now, I guess. Games. That's what, that's what my chat was telling me. They're like, "Oh, you're not that far in," you know. Like, like I'm like level fifty two, dude. What do that's you mean I'm not that yeah, far in? Like, I'm not, not starting far. over. <laughs> Game's not easy. Oh man. But anyway, yeah. Alden Ring. Uh, have you played any of these games? Isn't the developer called Supermassive? That's their name, right? That makes these like horror. Uh, I don't want to call them walking simulators. Until Dawn was their first really big game, I think. And they always cast like celebrities in their games. I mean, if they did Until Dawn, that's cool. Did you play Until Dawn? No, that's the memes. Did you watch the trailer for their new game, The Quarry? I I remember seeing the thumbnail of The Quarry. Yeah. Are you a Scream fan? A couple of tests. I don't fan. know what it is still. Are you a fan of Scream, the movie franchise? Yeah, I guess, yeah. D- David Arquette is the, the celebrity that they have cast in this one. And no I just, way. Yeah. Well, uh, Brenda Song is in it too, but I can't remember what she's been in. I think she's like a Nickelodeon or Disney cool. actor, actress. But this yeah. is for like, Xbox also? Oh, it is. Okay. I, I think it's Pog. multi-platform. I think it's It's multi It's on everything two. except Switch. Yeah. Looks pretty interesting. I kind of like the out. June. Get down, chill out. I kind of like the like June. '80s summer camp like theme theme they got going. You know what I mean? It looks like the the main character, like the girl in the middle, is uh, Holly from Back for Blood. <laughs> and it also looks like there's Doctor Catherine Halsey on the bottom left of her. The actual Halsey, or the one from the Halo show? <laughs> actual holiday like here i'll send you a screenshot she's just like her i'm looking at it. look at it on my phone hold on i don't want to screw up the, the podcast of you here if i can send it i've had a bad connection like this whole time oh yeah I don't, think, I don't think i went through processing that's okay oh there it goes oh there it goes <laughs> i get it yeah yeah that's funny anyway the spartans and the core and you need to come to do there you go so that you can the last one had Ashley Tisdale, and I'm pretty sure. Well, I don't. I, I think these games have like lots of like branching storylines, and the characters can like can can die. But I'm not positive. I haven't played one of them. Uh, I'm also gonna make a statement that everybody's gonna hate here, but because they made some PlayStation exclusive games, right? Like Until Dawn was a PlayStation exclusive, or no? Detroit Become Human. That's that's not them, uh, is it? That's somebody else. I thought. It's a different developer, I, I thought. But um, anyway, this is nothing. I don't know why I got here, but I always wanted to play the Order 1886 on PlayStation that was like, destroyed in reviews, but I never got around to it. Yeah. I think I bought it and I never played it. I thought that game looked super cool. I love werewolves. Like werewolves and vampires are like my thing. I love that stuff. Yeah. Like I was the biggest. I was the biggest Kate Beckinsale fan because of Underworld. And I love the I love the Underworld universe. I think that stuff's cool as hell. Uh, I don't think that really? one's coming back. Though. And Van Helsing. And Van Helsing. Um, never got into that one. But uh, uh, you never got into the one with um, Van what's Helsing. his name from Wolverine. No, uh, there's a game coming out though. Uh, what's it called? Is it called Weird? Yeah, it's Beckinsale's not called. Too. It's not called Weird West. It's something. It's like West of Dead or Dead. Of, Dead West or something, I, but I think the people who made Bullet Storm are making it, and it's a very like imagine, imagine uh, Van Helsing meets I Bullet Storm. What? People can fly? Yeah, they made uh, they made Outriders. 
that Square Enix game that was popular for like oh, yeah. two weeks. Yeah, I remember that because it was on Game Pass. Yeah. And it was popular for that amount of time. But it looks pretty interesting. It's basically Van Helsing, but with like, um, imagine like all the crazy like Bullet Storm esque, like over the top, you know. I thought that game was wildly underrated as well at the time. Yeah, I hear a lot of good things about Bullet Storm. The, 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 la- that everybody was, focused that on the language. And that game came out before Gears Judgment, too. Like, if you bought Bullet Storm, yes. you'd be able to get, like, the beta into the Gears yeah. Judgment. Yep. Oh, boy. I think they, <laughs> did they make, did they make Gears Judgment? I think they did. Yeah, Because it wasn't uh, did. epic. And it wasn't the cold. No, it was not epic. Yeah. Because the Judgment came out right after Gears 3. It told Baird's story and kind of pieced together a couple of things. And so, Judgment, it's interesting what the community thinks about Judgment. Like, the game clearly was not a hit. Yeah. Uh, the campaign was just turned into like this arcade experience where you complete the game and you get a score at the end. Um, it wasn't very cinematic. It was a very yeah. weird the spin-off on in the on most years. spin-off of sense. Yeah. Um, but it created like really cool characters that people are dying for them to come back. And they've only brought back maybe two characters from Judgment. Didn't that have like a um, class system in the multiplayer as well? Uh they had a class system for like the horde mode. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, here they are. Yeah. They didn't bring her back. I forgot what her name was, but people really want her back in games. I think of people a lot of Gears Esports really ripped, by the way. Girls. I didn't put that on the agenda because I figured we would just get sad talking yeah. about it, but I'll get there. So I I made a realization the other day, get down because I saw the post come back up and it's been like time since I read the first one. Because um they made it sound Jake, Jake Sucky, Jake Lucky. Um, congrats to him, by the way, for getting his job over at um, the IE Sports. But um, he talked about it like the next day because that was the announcement. It was like Gears Esports uh, is potentially done forever. And I'm like, no, they still said that Until they have the Gears game. Like, down the pipeline. Yeah. Until the next game. But I reread that. And it's interesting that they, they say that this is the final season for Gears of War. Mm-hmm. because they do they do mention like hey we got gears coming up but when you say the words this is the final season for gears of war esports i think that is the nail in the coffin that the coalition and microsoft will no longer be actually helming that uh i do think that was i think the next gears should there be a competitive scene for it um it won't be heralded by microsoft mm-hmm. Or, or the coalition because I think... it's clear that there's been like massive incompetence of how to handle the game itself in terms of development and massive you're going slow-mo here on us. how to handle it on the east i am okay i'm back yeah, you're good now the company i work for um holds uh has been heralding a lot of european esports for gears of war and you know i saw all the the sentiment looking at our socials see what we could do about it and there's not much we can do um and we had a contract with them too so that's interesting <laughs> but uh it, it was it was a weird way to do it it was super unexpected and it's such a bum bummer to see but majority of players aren't even there anymore nobody's yeah. playing that game unfortunately i think so the way i read it this is and it's my my opinion is not any different than yours i think you have more insight on it but kind of what i'm thinking is i think they're the heading the next gears game so to speak because there's there's been a rumor that microsoft is doing another like hd re- remaster collection like like master chief collection i think it'll be mm-hmm. gears which they don't want to tie an esports scene to for like a collection like that um which will buy you know the coalition another year probably to get the next gears game out so I, I think it pro- hope I'm I'm hoping this is my hope and I don't care who mm-hmm. runs the esports scene or whatever that you know much more about that than me. My hope is that they're kind of just saying like, okay, Gears Five is in the place that it is. We're gonna ramp this down. We're gonna buy ourselves a little bit more time with the Gears of War collection coming out in 2023 or whatever, and then you know we'll we'll come back full force with the next Gears of War in 2024 or 2025. And we'll, mm-hmm. we'll 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 rethink our whole esports approach, but whatever that may look like, I don't know. But I just hope there is one because it's such a great competitive game. Yeah, it really is. And I have a, I have an interesting take. I don't think Coalition, if there is a, a like a Marcus Phoenix collection, which is what the community's dubbed it, if there is a Phoenix collection, I don't think Coalition would be in development for that. I don't that. think they I have to. Co- no. 
Yeah, I think they would have the same studio who did um, the Gears of War Tactics uh, studio would be doing that. Maybe and Certain Infinity anything, will do it. <laughs> they're too busy making, we don't know. Um, but like, I, if anything, if they had that studio that made Tactics do the remaster, I would be 100% on board for that. Mm-hmm. Because that is a studio who freaking gets it. Yeah. Like, you watch the behind the they scenes. They nailed the Gears of War vibe for sure. They nailed it. They talked about like what they were trying to accomplish with that um, with that Gotham look to it. I don't Transylvanian kind of like architecture and the and the grit and the color tones and stuff like that. And the, the character connections. I really want to play this game. It's just such a long game. I got um, it. I got it. Are you ready? Yeah. OK, so so you're right. Let's say they got them to do the Marcus Phoenix collection or whatever, whatever they call it. And then are you ready for this? They announced the next Gears of War game, and Cliff Blazinski is freaking back. No, I don't no. know what's gonna happen. No, never mm-hmm. will. But I, no, <laughs> I, I just had to say it. You know, what? I'm gonna say something mean, and I respect him because he's done a lot for my life with the Gears of War franchise. But dude's arrogant as hell. <laughs> you <laughs> These know, days. Cliffy is one of those guys, and he's not the only one. There are a lot of people, and it's not exclusive to gaming, uh, who you look up to because they are really good at what they do. And when, mm-hmm. when you follow them, this is what social media has enabled. Because back in the yeah. day, we never got this level of access. You you read the crap that they're like tweeting or posting on Instagram or whatever, and you start to lose respect for them. Because it's like, yeah. uh, Marty O'Donnell is another one. Dude is a musical genius. And mm-hmm. then like once he started like opening his mouth, I was like, please, Marty, just shut up. Like, I think so highly yeah. of you and your work, like. But I agree. Cliffy is just I'm like, Cliffy, stop tweeting, dude. Like you're 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 like you literally created like unreal mm-hmm. gears of war. Like, you know, like just stop, please. I tweeted a, an image to a pro player for Halo because somebody was like saying that this pro player was like trash or something like that. And he like that pro player went to that person's Twitter and found some like really gross stuff on his TL. And he's like, is this you? And then I replied with an image that says opinion. We should all know each other less. <laughs> See, exactly. Like for real though, like yeah, it really sucks really when you good. look up to somebody and then, and then they just, and it's so easy to do. No, no human being is perfect. They do something oh, sure. st- stupid like that. And and then you can't see them the same after that, you know, like as we, as you get older too, it's just like, you're just, you watch it and you're like, I'm already tired of the conversation. Why are we, why are they still having yeah conversation about like why is it i get it it's important to you what is this something that what is x so important to you i get it but like god damn make a game continue making music yeah and maybe don't tweet if anything it's probably best if we block those people uh, or, that, we, or, that we look up to just so that way we can see I, something. i've actually thought about that like like i should just stop following these people because like i mean sometimes it's great and then other times it's like is it worth the risk like this you know like uh this guy was my hero growing up, you know, and like not Cliffy, but mm-hmm. <laughs> just I'm using this as somebody as an example. And then, you know, all of a sudden that happens and you're just like. That I'm everything I knew was a lie, you know, like, it, it really no, happens. One hundred percent. Man, imagine being a, a, a Harry Potter fan. And us talking yeah, about this. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, I luckily for me, I always knew that Harry Potter was trash, so. Uh, oh, shut up! Dude. I'm still for legacy. I'm actually everybody is except me. There See, was a. There was we a, just gotta follow the second that... I said Harry Potter's trash. Boom! Follow happened in chat. Somebody out there is like, yes. Somebody else in the world who hates Harry Potter. They don't hate Harry Potter. They hate J.K. Rowling. <laughs> Witchy, please educate yourself. How have no. you not seen it? I just like being That's Lord of the Rings. Just book. like not interested. Just don't. It's okay. Uncultured, all of you. <laughs> somebody, I'm, actually, I'm some, actually offended. Somebody sent me a message today that reminded me of you so much. It was another friend of mine. He he texted me back. I was I was trolling him, and I told him uh, uh his favorite basketball player is like is garbage, and he, he replied back hit Jason Tatum, and uh oh, he, he is, he's garbage. He. <laughs> But he replied back, I respect your wrong opinion. 
And it just reminded me so much <laughs> of you. <laughs> like that's not, like that's a, that's a Jedi response. That's a, that's a Jedi response, yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, last but not least for uh, normal topics, as we'll call them. Uh, are you a Clancy fan by any chance? Do you play the Clancy games? I'm Clancy. Yeah, I love me some Splinter Cell. Yeah. Um, yeah. X Defiant is one of their upcoming games that got revealed. It's kind of a blend of like Call of Duty and Overwatch. And it was originally going to blend uh, Ghost Recon, Splinter Cell, and The Division uh, into one universe. I've played this game. I can't talk about this game. But they hired a lot of Call of Duty pros to help advise it. Um, anyway, the, the Clancy community largely panned it because it is not it does not look like a Clancy game at all. It's kind of got a punk rock style to it. Uh, mm -hmm. Have you seen it at all? Have you have you? I have looked? not. No, no. Um, see it. But they actually they're ditching out of the blue. They kind of went radio silent for like six months and they just kind of came back and said, hey, we're starting testing soon. And they ditched the Tom Clancy name. So I wanted to ask yeah. you, do you think the Tom Clancy name still carries weight or do you think it's better at this point to kind of like branch off from it? Not only for X Defiant, but for Splinter Cell, you know, would you still call Splinter Cell Tom Clancy Splinter Cell or would you just be like, hey, yeah. Splinter Cell? No, I, I think it would. I, I think it would also be really good to bring it back into the light because it's obviously missing. I mean, we've got Tom Clancy's Rainbow Six Siege, but nobody calls it by its full name. No. Um, I mean, we still have Clancy games coming out, right? at least updates to what's existing. But clearly, Ubisoft only wants to play with the same fire it's had for the next 10 years. So who knows what, what will happen, but I think it still holds weight. I think that if I think there's a huge like, demand right now for at least a Splinter Cell game. And people oh, know sure. that it's Tom Well, Clancy they're remaking Splinter the Cell. first one. That's confirmed? Yeah. That's been confirmed. Is that going to take another 20 years? Just like um, probably. <laughs> what's it called? Um, Beyond Good and Evil. That Beyond game's Evil never 2. coming out. It's never coming out. It's so it's and, they and, spent and, so much money, bro. And, and you know, you know what the problem with it is? It had all the people that played it are now 50 year old dads and moms. And there's, there's nobody out there who's like anxiously awaiting, you know, the sequel to Beyond Good and Evil. And I love the first Beyond and Good and Evil, but it's just like they totally lost all momentum. At this point, nobody even it's like Duke Nukem forever. You know, everybody's going to say, where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Oh, it's out. Oh, that's cool. Goodbye. You know, even with what they showed, it just was so not Beyond Good and Evil. Also. It was a completely different game at that point. It looked good, but none of it like had really like any of that weight behind it besides like the really good cinematics that yeah. we got out of it um Pigman. so i mean I, I i'm stoked for beyond good and evil 2 i'll still play it because i really hate where it was left off and i actually beat beyond the first one actually like i want to say like three four years ago i had yeah. never i never played it growing up and uh i remember i was just like man people keep saying it's beyond good and evil 2 what even is beyond good and evil played it and i loved it it was yeah. a very basic, very basic platformer. I love that because of it. It was quite an adventure. Um, I liked it. I still don't think Beyond Good and Evil 2 will ever come out. I think the creator of this franchise is gone from Ubisoft. Um, but I think going back to Clancy, um, I, I think the problem is, I think, yeah, I think you're right. I think it definitely still, still carries weight. But the problem is they're not utilizing it correctly. Like if they're going to make a Tom Clancy game, they need to make a Tom Clancy game. Like, Mm -hmm. that's that like make it a tactical shooter like make a new you know like i keep saying it over and over again that new ghost recon battle royale that they're making a hundred percent should have been like more tactical and realistic like PUBG. uh that's why that... the name is in a weird place is because they are kind mm -hmm. of squandering it uh well i also forgot this because this game fell off the face of the earth uh tom tom clancy's ghost recon yeah. the uh uh, the newer ones yep. like no one cares about those games and it's really cool that they actually introduced him in the game but like no one cares about those games uh, the, i have Damn no idea liar. why i i, I got on paper it sounds like some like some stupid I, I don't know who it was just like well we've got rainbow six which is you know first person and it's huge and it's pvp and we got the division and that's you know pvpve so let's just make ghost recon a pve co-op experience and it'll be fine it, it 
I I don't think Ghost that's not what Ghost Recon is. Like I just I I think it's I think it's wasting the franchise. And you know, let Splinter Cell be their PVE game. If they're gonna have a PVE only game, which I still think that Spies versus Mercs 100 percent needs to come back. But um, if you're mm-hmm. gonna do a PVE only franchise, make it Splinter Cell. I I don't know why they chose Ghost Recon as as and I know it technically has some PVP in it technically, but it's a joke. Mm-hmm. You know what was a really good game first time? Uh, Ghost Recon Future Soldier. I really like that game actually. Uh, the one be- was it? I think the one before that too. Advanced Warfare was really really good at the time. I don't think this came out the, the during Advanced Warfare actually. I think this came out uh, like in two thousand like nine actually. Let me see. I think Graw came out in like two thousand six. I called it Graw. That was the acronym for it. It was like an Xbox yeah, three hundred and sixty launch title. Let's see here, Ubisoft Future Soldier. It's got like a nine point three out of ten on IGN, seven point five out of ten. Oh, that came out in two thousand twelve. Never mind. But hey, Still I mean, good there's, there's good. Sure, right? There's Ghost Recon. Ghost Recon started purely as a PvP game. Ghost Recon was you couldn't even see your gun on the screen. You had a crosshair. Those oh, were the man. old school Wait. Clancy games. And then those game, those Ghost Recon games were third person, I believe. They were, they were third person. They were very Mass Effecty. You yeah. command yeah. your squad to go to where, utilize their abilities. All right. They didn't have like a super awesome story, but it was still good. Yeah, the story in the Tom Clancy games is always boils down to Russia. R- Russia's gonna nuke, whatever. Got to stop them. Um, right, where are we at now? We're at this week's releases. So we got some interesting ones this week. Uh, Ghostwire Tokyo from uh, Bethesda and Tango, Shinji Mikami's studio. Uh, mm-hmm. The last Bethesda... The last Kirby. Uh, the, <laughs> uh, the last Bethesda exclusive for PlayStation. Because um, it's PS5 oh. and uh, PC exclusive. Console I exclusive. we going Kirby. Forgotten land. Kirby in the Forgotten Land. <laughs> Tiny Tina's Kirby Wonderlands. What? I said Kirby's Last of Us. <laughs> is, what is it? it may, that's, have you not seen the game? No. Of course it not. It literally looks like The Last of Us, but Kirby. Is this the one that like Kirby can turn into a car? You're frozen yeah. on my screen. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he can turn into a car. Um. Tiny Tina's Wonderlands, which is the Borderlands spinoff. And I pulled this one out of left field. Tiny Tina. Norco, what I call it? I call it something else? I don't know. Oh, okay. No, no, no. I don't know what that one's called. I don't even know what that is. Oh, no, no. So, so Norco is a game that it's like an it's like an old Telltale style game, but it's it's based like in Louisiana. And I just really love that like Louisiana. It's like like true detective season one, like that mystery, like the bog, the swampland kind of thing. I I love that setting. So hey, I'm throwing it out there. It's an okay. indie game. It's an indie game, deserves a spotlight. That's pretty cool. Are you getting any of these? Or you wanna play any of them? Uh, I definitely want to play Ghostwire Tokyo, but I'll probably wait for that to come to Game Pass. And I definitely want to play Kirby's Forgotten Land, because it's been a little minute since we've had an open world adventure Kirby game. Um, and don't really care much for Tiny Tina Wonderland. Like Borderlands was a very big game for me. I didn't care for it. I didn't care for Borderlands three being basically a Destiny like, um, heavier Destiny like game. Um, and I don't know what Narco is, but you know that's interesting though. Uh, Ghostwire Tokyo reviews are really all over the place. I think that's going to be a game that is either going to hit with you or it's going to miss. There's going to be like no in betweens. Like you're going to play it and be like this is sweet, or you're going to be like this is dumb. You pet a lot of cats and dogs in that game. If you haven't seen that, there's like a whole montage of it. There's like a like ghost Shibby Inus that you could follow and everything too, yeah. and like dig up coins and stuff. I think that was pretty cool. The game doesn't look terrible to me. I just don't know what the hell it's about. <laughs> I don't think anybody does. Yeah. Um, um, uh, Kirby, but I, Kirby though. Kirby is Nintendo's most underrated franchise. The, I don't know what Kirby it even was that I had on NES, but I loved it. It was amazing, especially for its time. Kirby's Wonderland, probably. I think there was like Wonderland and Dreamland or something, wasn't there? Actually, it was definitely Dreamland. It was Dreamland. Because there was like a Game Boy 
version too that was some land i think mm -hmm. uh no but that one looks really fun it, it, it's a massive world that you get to explore i don't think it's very interactive though so a lot of it is just kind of like walk around through it simulator for kirby but uh, oh, all the stuff that you kirby. get to do with it like transform into the car and stuff like that and the gameplay loop mechanics are really fun it's definitely a one-time play and done though so i mean usually it'd be like game pass it or wait for a sale none of those two things will ever happen you can get it on nintendo pass when it launches in like 21 22 um <laughs> I didn't know that Tiny Tina's Wonderlands is a Dungeons and Dragons based Borderlands game. Did you know that? Yeah, uh, I remember watching the announcement for it. I had no idea. It was on PlayStation. It was on the PlayStation stage or not stage. It was on PlayStation's thing. And um, I mean, it looked interesting. I don't think it looked like bad, but I, it has I no still hype. have any. It's kind of funny. It has no hype. It's... Borderlands is huge, but it, it, it has... has none. And gearbox gearbox has like a really weird like under the radar thing going on right now considering borderlands technically like absent at the moment like once borderlands 3 launched quiet after well, that randy pitchford is an idiot he's he's been in like a bunch of scandals too and i don't think that's helping them um, oh okay so that's fine. didn't they found some really weird crap this goes back a few years they found some really weird, like disturbing crap in his desk at work. Uh, and this was like before, like Me Too and everything. This is probably like five years ago. I, I can't remember what it was, but I remember there was like real problems about what he, oh. <laughs> what he was doing. And then uh, I hear a funny story. PAX East, not last. Uh, there was no PAX East last year. The year before that, or maybe it was three years ago. They unveiled it was Borderlands 3 was announced at PAX East. And I was there that day and like it was my first time I had ever been to PAX. So like we literally got to the door to go into the theater where, where it was going to get announced. And uh, they're like they stopped. They put their arm out like right in literally right in front of the person in front of us. And they're like, well, like we're full. So like my, my friend and I literally well, got we, we, were the, we were the first two who were not let in because the room got to max capacity. <laughs> so we didn't we dang. didn't go. But it was OK. That's unfortunate. Yeah. The the announcement though was uh it turned into a meme because I'm pretty sh I'm pretty sure if you look back at it um like Randy Pitchford came on stage and I think like the trailer broke like it, it wouldn't play and it took like way longer than it was supposed to it took like an hour to like play like a two minute trailer so ooh it's okay oof uh um, actually it was a uh... I was right beneath Gearbox at the studios in Frisco, Texas. They um they have a bar underneath it. It's called Nerd Life, I think. Um, and it's basically just like a a bar where it has like a bunch of game consoles down there. You can just like play games or play board games. And uh, our server was just like, oh yeah, the Gearbox is right above us. Like pe people make uh, Florida Lands. It's like, oh that's cool. How far is id Software from you? Where, like? where is they? Uh, I think they're Austin based. Austin, so yeah, I think far. so. Yeah. I froze. No, you're okay, good. Okay, there we go. I, I can go. still hear you. All right, cool. Yeah, they're they're located in Austin, I think. Okay, isn't Devolve isn't Devolver based in Texas too? I thought Devolver was based in Australia. No, I'm thinking of Annapurna and Interactive. Um, yeah, I think so. I'm pretty sure Devolver at least started on, in Texas. Devolver. I know we have a uh, Bioshock, um, Austin. The Bobber Digital. Let's see here. Yeah, they're uh, they're founded in uh, yeah they're in Austin, Texas, also. See, there you go, dude. You gotta go for a tour of all these studios. I don't want to live in Austin, man. Don't you go go for a tour though? Go over there for like a tour, a, a okay, day maybe trip. a tour. Yeah. Yeah. I could go in there and be like, hey man, I work for like esports, dude. Like, can, can you show me bro? like the next Doom game, bro? <laughs> Devolver, show me where like all these sweet indie games. Where are you hiding, Mick Gordon? Yeah. <laughs> Show me Hotline Miami 3, please. I'll, um, tighten, your, I'll tighten his chains on his hands <laughs> as you know, he doesn't leave. The funny story, they, uh, somebody got a tour. This is a rumor, but I'm, I, I very strongly feel that it's true. Uh, when World of Warcraft Shadowlands was in development, which is a giant... The story of World of Warcraft Shadowlands is like the biggest disaster of any 
uh, fran franchise of that size's story I think I've ever seen. There was a leak uh, during Shadowlands development, uh, and it was literally somebody like got a tour of the studio, and they like pulled out their phone and they took a picture of like a piece of concept art that was like on the table, and that turned out to be like the main villain for Shadowlands, and they like they 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 leaked it. It's just random person, and then the rumors are because of the way the story has turned out and just been a giant just disaster that once that leak happened that blizzard literally like changed up their story that they're they're like you know well it leaked out we gotta we gotta we can't do it now and, and it's turned mm -hmm. into a giant just for, because some random dude literally like potato quality pick took a picture of something laying on somebody's desk and it just happens to be the antagonist of the antagonist of the good which they years. hadn't revealed yet. Yeah. All That's right. unfortunate. <laughs> yeah, it has been. I wish uh, I, whenever I was like, when it comes to tours, I wish whenever I was in Dallas, I want to go at least tour uh Envy, their headquarters, Team Envy, uh, and Team Optics. But uh never did. Didn't so Tesla sad. down there too. Was it Envy? I think it was the being team of this. Oh, Houston nah, Outlaws. A Houston oh, Outlaws. I don't even know who Outlaws even are anymore, dude. I used to be an Outlaws fan because I love the team, and now like the team is completely on it is not I identical. Totally. I should have put this on the agenda, but I didn't. So um the next season of Overwatch League starts in two months, and they're using Overwatch 2 uh to mm -hmm. play Overwatch League on. But as of right now, Overwatch League this new season has zero sponsors. Zero. And I, I, I'm really wondering if it's... Do you think it's more because of the state of Overwatch? Or do you think it's because of all the scandals with Activision Blizzard? Uh, No, I think that they're probably just holding their like cards to their chest right now. I, I don't mm -hmm. think they just have anything to say at the moment. It could be internally funded as well. Yeah. I, I just... I'm curious because they, they had big sponsors before. They had uh, like Kellogg's. They had uh, H Omen by HP. Um, a lot. They had a lot of sponsors. Mm -hmm. I, I really um, hope Overwatch League gets going like again, like at the at the level that it was early on. Cause it was really fun. No, I agree. I I love I love the, I love watching it. It's really fun. Just need the game to be good now. Um, yes. What was I going to say? Uh, last thing I think would also be that the Activision Microsoft deal um, is kind of being investigated now because mm -hmm. it's a lot of money. Uh, pretty much to be expected, right? You know, you don't just throw well, around. Bobby also got deal. himself in an insider trading case involved in, in that deal, so that's not yeah. helping. King Bobby. That man just doesn't know when to stop, man. <laughs> Oh, you years have ago. so much money and you're just like i need to get a little bit more man <laughs> the dude's like more, over 50 right now he, he really doesn't have that much time left on this earth he doesn't need that much money mm -hmm. i'm not the type of person to tell you you don't need money you keep your money but whenever you're a scumbag like him his bonus still last stuff, year you don't need more money his bonus last year was like over 150 million dollars his bonus not his salary not his stock options his bonus, bonus. How did they get a bonus from last year? Last year was like the worst year of Call of Duty. <laughs> because it's freaking Bobby. He's a scammer. I'm you know what? I'm, I'm, Bobby. I'm surprised Call of Duty isn't rife with NFTs already. I mean, Jesus. Well, with uh, Microsoft now owning it. No, not with probably Microsoft. Probably not, which is probably no. a good thing. I've been under Bobby. No, when, it, when it will. Oh, yeah. It would be under Bobby 100%. It's like Konami put out like Castlevania NFTs a little while ago too, and it's like, could you, could you be more off the mark? You know, like you're not even carrying on your your gaming franchise, but you still have the balls to put out NFTs on your franchise. You won't make a game in. Oh god, and you fired Apparently all the developers of what? Apparently they are making a game. Didn't so that's we talk the about rumor. That that's the rumor. Yeah. yeah, not the time to roll out NFTs though. Before that game, if you announce the game. And then said, oh, and hey, to celebrate, we're releasing these NFTs. That's fine. Mm -hmm. But just be like, oh, hey. I remember the, the, the last major Konami game was Metal Gear Survive, right? Survival or something like <laughs> yes. that. Yes. Uh, really, can we just make sure we delete that 30 seconds from the VOD? <laughs> Even name <laughs> dropping that game. So sad. Well, that... 
I was going to talk crap. I have a friend who like loves Metal Gear and like after everything, Metal Gear, right? Like Survive comes out. I see him playing on Steam. I'm like, you're actually playing that game? He's like, yeah, I like it. And I'm like, oh my God, dude, we got to reevaluate our well, friendship right now. The, the problem with it, I mean, I don't want to say problem. The, the enigma of it is that that game engine was amazing. The And the, 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 the actual gameplay of like, you know, uh, ground zeros and phantom pain like the core systems and stuff were amazing mm -hmm. so like they okay. very well i could see people you know the hardcore metal gear fans like still who who i guess can just totally be okay with their franchise being pissed on and lit on fire still enjoying it but um yeah zombie game whatever metal gear oh such a weird such a weird combo i was not expecting that whenever they announced it i was like oh wow that's how they're gonna throw them under the bus yeah they no. did a good job doing that yeah it's so sad um all right we got don't miss it to close us out uh i'm gonna do the new game this week and jada is gonna do the existing game that you guys should not miss you want to go first or you want me to go first i can go first so my game is a little 3DS game from Level Up Gaming, um, or Level Five Gaming. Uh, are and, they still around? Uh, it's like a little RPG. They are not. They're not. Okay, <laughs> I was just curious. Sorry. No, they're definitely not. Um, but uh, no, it was a fun little, little like Animal Crossing kind of match mix up with it. Um, but it was very RPG element as sort of like Animal Crossing was like build a town. Um, and this one, you build every single type of different skill that you want. So you could be like a wizard, you could be a fisher, you could be a farmer, you could be a sword, you could be a knight. Um, all those types of things. There's a lot of content in there. And it's just it's just a really cute game. It's a really good way to kind of like just ease the time. Um, it definitely didn't hit a huge uh, dem like huge demographic, unfortunately. That's how most of these Japanese titles end up anyways. But Fantasy Life, I loved it. I put probably like a good like 80 hours into the game on my DS. Um, I'm pretty sure you could get the like um, unsecure way of playing it. Um, so in this case, if you have 3DS, it is for sale still. Uh, see, uh, I, I was going to ask that. Up, though. It's so sad that there's so many of those games like that, whether it be 3DS <laughs> or whatever era, that are going to kind of be lost because their developers or publishers aren't yeah. interested in bringing them forward. Uh, I think I, I had to double check the uh, the developer of it. And uh, I saw somebody selling it for a hundred bucks on eBay. True. Yeah, hundred dollars for the physical copy of the game. Yeah. You know, but, level uh, five really was fun a game. I loved it. They had some good games. They were huge, uh, like during like the PlayStation Two uh, era. They were like the next big thing. They were like, I think they did like, did they do one of the Breath of Fire games? I want to say. Uh, and weren't weren't they the developers so. of True Fantasy Live Online, which was like gonna be like an xbox mmorpg that was gonna be like it was supposed to be like game changing and it got canceled mm -hmm. um yeah they shut down in 2020 oh that's sad and they had 300 employees yeah, yeah that's sizable studio very sizable oh actually wait a minute let's see here no 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 they're still around actually oh good they have Nino, they had the Nuni, uh, Nino Kuni Cross Worlds come out last year, but it looks like they're focused mainly on mobile. Um, that makes sense. The next one, Inazuma 11 Great Roads of Heroes, is a mobile game, but that's also going to be on PlayStation 4 and Switch. And yeah, True Life Fantasy, True Fantasy Live Online canceled for Xbox. Yeah, that was supposed to be like revolutionary at the time. It was going to be like the first console MMO-ish type game. Uh, I think I think it was kind of like an Animal Crossing. Actually, it was it was going to take like the Animal Crossing concept, but do it in a much different light and add like online elements. And this was like original Xbox. Mm -hmm. So like way long ago. Yeah, I'm looking at the Wikipedia for right now. Despite being fully playable, the near completion, according to Microsoft, around the time of the cancellation, the title's development was littered with complications from the beginning. One such problem was Level 5's inexperience with online network coding and their inability to properly implement voice chat Adably, the game's a feature into the game, a feature never before implemented in such a large scale at MMORPG. However, Microsoft was very adamant in its inclusion that it was a key feature to their Xbox Live service. That's unfortunate to hear. That's it's crazy. 
it sounds like something Nintendo has right now, just with basic anti aliasing <laughs> <laughs> voice chat still 25 <laughs> years later. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. <laughs> Maybe they should call it Level 5 and ask for some tips. It'd be cool uh, if they bring it back. I thought they shut down. I guess they didn't. I remember you know, seeing you know, that they were You know what I really want to see? I, I want to see more of that now that like game development has totally changed and like, like you know, like with recently with like the original Quake when they made it, um, when they did the HD re-release of Quake, they also added a totally new mode. I would love to see some developer like pick up like literally as it was like twenty years ago. Like don't don't reboot it. Like pick it mm -hmm. up as it was an Xbox One game and finish it and release it. Like I I would love to see stuff like that. You just want CS go to last forever, don't you, Mayor? <laughs> I'm not even a huge Counter Strike fan. Um, say, um, what's interesting enough, you bring, you bring up Quake. Um, I remember they announced like Quake four or five. I, I'm not a person, really know, but um, they had like a whole dedicated esports team for two. They're like, yep, we're working on esports. Blah, 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 blah. Here's the alpha, it's free, anybody could join, and like dead silence after that. And then, um, I want to say like a month or two ago, I was just cruising through like streams by work, and I see that. Xbox is holding a They've been hosting the Quake, Quake Champions. Tournament. Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was cool as tech. I watched it for a bit and yeah, they, yeah, they're hosting. They had drops and everything enabled too. I totally Yeah, you're good. You cut out a little bit. Okay. But I totally believe that um it makes sense because the Quake is an Xbox property now. And I, I'm I'm a, I'm ninety 7% positive there's a Quake reboot on the way, so it makes total sense for Xbox to do what they can to put it even if in, a, in front of a niche audience and just kind of re-familiarize people with it and expose the Xbox uh, audience to it. Esports competitive scene. Yeah. Quake is an amazingly right. high skill ceiling game. Um, yeah, a lot of fun jumping. My Don't Miss It for this week um is an upcoming indie horror game called Choo Choo Charles. I remember this thing, dude. <laughs> uh, it is basically about a train with like spider legs chasing you. And I have no idea if this game will take 20 minutes or 20 hours, but it's just it's just one of those amazing concepts that only like an indie developer could could get away with making. And uh, I, I hope it's good. It's I just I, I don't really need to say much more. Watch a trailer for it. And I think you'll know right away if it's for you or not. Uh, add it to your Steam wish list, and uh, there you go. Choo choo! I, I, I can't really do it justice. Just please watch the trailer. Choo choo, Charles. Trailer. I thought it was funny. Please watch the trailer. Uh, Thomas the Train Engine mods, and they're like, <laughs> you know what? I can make this horror. I can make it even more horrific yeah. than it needs to be. Yeah. That just I don't know. I love stuff like that. Literally, what it is. <laughs> Like you, the opening for you're just like walking through the woods and just hear, yeah, <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, I I love right. like literally those like isolated horror experiences like that. Even if the game literally takes like twenty minutes, you could tell like really creepy atmospheric stuff. Mm -hmm. Like yes, there there. I played a Lovecraftian fishing game on stream a few weeks ago, and it was uh just yeah interesting yeah just yeah fun. Yeah, I mean, it. I wouldn't know if I'd say fun, but it was it was very well done. Like, uh, just bizarre. It kind of leaves you with this, just like what the, f and it only takes like literally ten minutes of your time. It's free, you know. It's like mm -hmm. that's cool. Yeah. All right. Okay. I liked it. But so that, um, I think that just about wraps it. Yeah, that concludes our show for the week. Um, yeah. let, let us know on Twitter and Discord and stuff what stories you guys want to see us discuss next week or take on in the future. Um, be back here at 7 p.m. Central next Monday because we will be back here waiting for you. There you go. He led with Central this time, not not whatever his East Coast time was. Trash time zone. Uh, let's raid someone. Who you want to raid? Can you raid? Can you do the raid, Nemesis GG? I'm gonna put up to thank the screen to thank our sponsors real quick, uh, and then you you can raid whoever you want. How about that? So uh, everybody have a good night. Let's raid somebody for some fun. And uh, we'll see you next Monday. Peace, y'all.